Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning prayer. As we begin, let's just take a few moments as we come into God's presence today. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of, your, of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance as we rejoice in the gift of our saving help. Sustain us with your bountiful spirit and our lips shall sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So after crossing the Red Sea, Moses and Miriam give praise to God for their deliverance. And then the Israelites make their way into the desert. And after a month, they start to run out of food. And that's where we kind of pick up the story this morning in Exodus 16. The whole Israelite community set out from Elim and the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food that we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on other days. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked down toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? for they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. So yesterday we read that the Israelites had been confronted by the Red Sea and the Egyptians were in hot pursuit. In their fear, only Moses showed faith to stand firm. God parted the Red Sea and the Israelites marched on through and in the process defeated Pharaoh's army in one fell swoop. I imagine if you were there, it was not something that you were going to forget easily and certainly something that would make you sit up about your faith. But less than a month later, in the desert, reserves running low. And what do the people do? Well, they start to grumble. And complain and worse than that they start reminiscing about the good old days back in Egypt. This is the same Egypt where they were slaves and were crying out to God for rescue. There's a certain kind of irony in what they're doing here. 
you've got children, I wonder if uh, you've ever had them complaining or moaning and particularly saying that phrase that things aren't fair. I tend to get quite cross with my boys when I hear that. My standard line is, well, life isn't fair. Deal with it. Now, thankfully, our Heavenly Father is much more tolerant than I am. And my boys are fine, by the way. You know, we can look at the Israelites and see how ungrateful they were. We can scoff and say, well, didn't they know that God was with them all the time? We look and just don't understand how they had the audacity to complain. Perhaps we want to say to the Israelites, well, life's just not fair. Deal with it. But if we were just to stop for a moment and apply that to our own lives, I wonder if we're really any different. When things are tough, do we look back at all the times God has stood with us? When we're upset or feeling alone, do we ever recognise God is right there in it with us? When we feel like all our reserves are just about gone, do we really trust that God will provide? I know for me that I can honestly answer yeah, I can't honestly answer yes to all of those things. I mean, sure, I, I know that God is there and I know that God will provide. And, and absolutely, God is, is with me when, when the rubber hits the road. But do I always give praise and thankfulness? Does it always feel like that's going to be the case? Well, no, because I have doubts and worry and sometimes my faith wavers. But the beauty of this story is that God doesn't give up on the Israelites and God never gives up on me, even if I give up on God. See, the manna came, bread from heaven, quails fell from the sky. God took care of the physical and in Jesus, he takes care of the spiritual too. Because Jesus, the bread of life, even when I didn't deserve it, even when I was ungrateful, even when I complained, Jesus went to that cross anyway. See, we often talk in church about grace. And that's exactly what grace is. Grace, the opposite of karma, which is about getting what you deserve. Grace is about getting what you don't deserve and not getting what you do deserve. So you be thankful for the grace that you receive from God today. Be thankful for God's grace in your life and know that God will provide in all your needs. Amen. And so as I do each day, I'm going to pray the prayer of the uh, prayer of the day by the Church of England. And then if you'd like to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of the victory through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. We say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The ricket really does need to stop getting the Lord's Prayer wrong. But for now, the final blessing, I hope you have a great day. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Amen.